If my Ummah knew, if my people knew how much virtuous, how important this month of Ramadan is, they would wish and desire that the entirety of the whole year is Ramadan. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that this is the month of Rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. This is the month of forgiveness. This is the month where we can return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects people from hellfire. But we must ask ourselves, how are we planning for this month? How will we welcome the month of Ramadan? It's narrated that Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to prepare six months in advance. Six months in advance for the month of Ramadan because they truly understood how important this month is for the Muslim. And unfortunately, you find my brothers in Islam that for many people today, it has become something cultural. It has become something routine. And we are missing the point and the essence of this holy month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me and you as an opportunity to return to Him. We don't spend the first week trying to overcome with the fasting and the headaches and all that. And spend the second week with some invitations. And then the last 10 days you find that the month of Ramadan has just slipped away and gone. This is preparation, my brothers, in Islam. We all want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want to change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He will never change the state of a nation unless they start with a change that's within themselves. The change starts with me. You find that the majority of the preparation that we do, my brothers, in Islam, is not the one that will draw us nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet you find that the majority of the preparation that we do is stocking up the pantry and the fridge, subhanAllah. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained and made fasting obligatory upon you. Not so that you can abstain from food and water. No. So that you may attain piety. So that you can draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the true objective, my brothers, in Islam. The Fuqah mentioned fasting of the eyes, fasting of the ears, fasting of the tongues, fasting of the eyes, the hands, the feet. What does it mean the fasting of these bodily parts? To fast your eyes is to not look at anything which is disobeying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To not look at anything haram. Like a sawm al udhan How many Muslims in the month of Ramadan listen to music saying that this is passing time? Or Sawmul Lisani, fasting of our tongues, people backbiting, gossiping, slandering, you find cursing, reviling, swearing, spreading of rumors, backbiting. Unfortunate increases in this month of Ramadan. Because some of us don't understand the intent of Ramadan. That's why a person may only gain hunger and thirst and fatigue in this month of Ramadan, because they've not really understood the whole purpose of this month of Ramadan. Sawmul Yaddi not to touch anything haram or to take anything haram. Sawmul Rijdi not to walk to any way haram. That many young Muslims begin to indulge in haram. These are all elements of fasting we need to develop till eventually you find that the person guards their faculties. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that individual. Will call out to Jibreel that I love so and so till eventually that I become the eyes by which the believer sees. The hand by which the believer touches, the leg by which the believer walks. What does this hadith mean? The person only looks at that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only touches that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only walks to that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Till eventually if the believer, if he asks me, then I'll give him. If he's to seek my protection, my refuge, I will protect him. But imagine if you were prepared and planned. To meet the month of Ramadan, wanting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Wanting to improve yourself as a Muslim. Wanting to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourself the question, how can I get the best out of this month? What are, what are my objectives? How can I make sure that I seize the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting to me? Subhanallah, you find something amazing, amazing about this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says the month of Ramadan is the month that the Quran was sent down. When you look into these verses and analyze, you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He first makes mention of the month of Ramadan, He associates it with the book of Allah. He makes an association with the book of Allah before He makes an association with the month of Ramadan with fasting. 
this has an, a great lesson for us a great lesson for me and you to realize that the month of Ramadan is not just about abstaining from food it's about connecting with the book of Allah and this is one of the objectives and one of the plans that we must make if you're unable to write to read the book of Allah make a plan do whatever you can do to make sure that you improve in your connectivity on your relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are able to read it's an opportunity for you to memorize it's an opportunity for you to read to do a complete khatam of the Quran connect with the book of Allah this is how the relationship starts my brothers in Islam our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us something amazing about the benefit of the book of Allah and the month of Ramadan he says the fasting will come on the day of judgment and the Quran will come on the day of judgment he says ya Allah I prevented this person from his food and from his water please make me his intercession make me his intercession so the Quran will come and say ya Allah I have made this person I have prevented him from sleeping at night because he stayed up reading the book of Allah let make me his intercession so you have the, uh, the Quran and the fasting fighting who will intercede for you on the day of judgment so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow both of these both of these the Quran and the fasting to intercede for you on the day of judgment my brothers in Islam start from now if you start from now by Allah you will find that by the time the month of Ramadan is there you are tasting the beauty of it and this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brothers in Islam it's a means of guidance and we all need the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that book of Allah my brothers in Islam is a means of therapy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting us with an amazing opportunity Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the, in the hadith whosoever fasts in the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his previous sins and another rishi he says whosoever stands up in prayer in the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his sins from now start practicing yanawafil salawat imagine praying 12 rak'at of sunnah every single day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised that for the person that does this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a palace and we all know about the sunnah of taraweeh my brothers in Islam to come in a congregation and build that relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salat and unfortunately you find many people today they seek out the shortest possible opportunity to pray taraweeh they actually compete who can perform taraweeh quickly and go back home first the sahaba radiallahu anhum used to perform long qiyam and one of the things that we find also my brothers in Islam is that many people they leave very quickly they come pray a couple of rakat and leave and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that whosoever completes the salah with the imam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward for night prayer for the entirety of the night praying if you stay and remain until the imam finishes what an amazing opportunity my brothers in Islam my brothers in Islam the month of Ramadan is the month of dua it's an amazing opportunity for us to call and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so a man comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, Ya Rasulullah, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala father we need to call him? Or is he close that we can just call upon him? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings down Quran and says, If my slave asks you about me, tell them that I am near. I am close. I am here to accept their call. I am here to answer their dua. The da'wah and the supplication of the person that is fasting is answered. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents us with an amazing opportunity in the month of Ramadan. That before you break your fast, there is a golden opportunity where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua. But you find majority of people today, my brothers in Islam, they are so excited about the food that they forget and they miss that golden opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made available for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, ask me whatever it is that you want and your dua and supplication will be answered. Don't miss that opportunity. In fact, from now start planning. Whether it's for yourself, whether it's for your deen, whether it's for your finances, whether it's for your family, whether it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to be one of the memorizers of, of the Qur'an, whether it's about becoming righteous, whether it's about financial abilities, whether you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guarantee you Jannah, whether you care about the Ummah, if you truly care about the Ummah and the, all the oppression that's happening around the world, this is your opportunity, my brother in Islam. This is the opportunity to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call Him, beg Him. Wallahi, it's something worthy of discussion with your family, with your spouse. What dua are we going to make this month of Ramadan? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith, he says, wake up for that pre-dawn meal, because in that meal, before Fajr, there is amazing blessing for you. A lot of people say today, I don't need to wake up. 
In fact, you find some of the ulama, they say, even if you have a young breastfeeding child, wake them up at that time and give them a few suckles because in these few suckles there is a blessing and barakah for them. What an amazing opportunity. Let's plan that with our family from now. My brothers in Islam, one of the sunnah that has been forgotten in our day and time is the sunnah of i'tikaf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never missed this sunnah. In fact, Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates and says that when the last 10 nights of Ramadan would come, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stand up in prayer. He would perform i'tikaf. He would not go home, he would stay in a masjid. He would stay in a masjid and perform long qiyam, long salah. Subhanallah. And he would wake his family up. He would become more serious in the last 10 nights. And of course, there is nothing more greater than finding the night of Laylatul Qadr in that last 10 nights. And one of the best ways that you can guarantee it, my brother in Islam, is to make sure that you are performing i'tikaf in the last 10 nights. Make a plan from now. Imagine knowing that you covered all the last 10 nights and you've guaranteed yourself Laylatul Qadr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that worship in this night is equivalent to what? It is better than 1,000 months of worship and not miss on the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has up for grabs for us. Because by Allah, no one has a guarantee that they will see another Ramadan. No one has that guarantee how many people were with us last year. 